Hi guys, this is Ian Fairley, and welcome back to another episode of my dinosaur series. Last time on our dinosaur series, we talked about how the giant carnivorous theropod, Yanchuanosaurus, had fossil parts that may have been missing when it died in a strange pose. The dinosaur also seemed to have a bite force that was as strong as T-Rex, or even an American alligator. We also talked about how the giant long-necked sauropod Mamegisaurus had the longest neck of any sauropod dinosaur, and even the type species of this dinosaur had 19 vertebrae with long rods running along their necks. Now that we have these facts about these dinosaurs covered, it's time to talk about another type of sauropod and another type of theropod for this episode. Amphocelius and Sauropagnex. Let's start with the Amphocelius, shall we? The name of the dinosaur, Amphocelius, means bion cave or hollow at both ends because when it was discovered and described in Colorado of the U.S., 1877, it was originally known only from two vertebrae and leg bones. But then, a giant bone was found a year later in 1878, and it happened to be the largest vertebrae ever discovered in dinosaur history. Famous 19th century paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope decided this bone belonged to the Amphocelius itself. He kept this nearly 8 foot long backbone in Philadelphia. But the enormous vertebrae then disappeared. It may have actually came from a dinosaur up to 160 feet, 49 meters long. The whole body size of Amphocelius was 70 feet long, 30 feet tall, and 270,000 pounds. A building this big would probably be the same size as the dinosaur itself. Two type specimens have been classified, such as A. altus and A. fragilimus, by Cope. It lived during the late Jurassic period, 155 million years ago. The sauropod was once classified as a member of the Diplodocidae family, since it was thought to be related to Diplodocus, meaning double beam. Then in 1921, Osborne and Mook re-identified the dinosaur material as a specimen of Camarasaurus, meaning chamber lizard. Due to incomplete nature though, such lengths of any known sauropod were highly ignored. In year 2018, Kenneth Carpenter renamed Amphicelius as a new genus Marapunosaurus and reclassified it from Diplodocidae to Rapacosauridae, which consists of a family of sauropods known from fragmentary fossil remains from the Cretaceous of South America, Africa, North America, Europe, Central Asia, and possibly India. During the time of its life in the Jurassic period, the environment around Amphicelius would have resembled a modern savanna like where elephants live today. But since grass didn't grow until the late Cretaceous period, Amphicelius depended on ferns for food source due to their low caloric content. The sauropod had a digestive system that allowed food consumption of ferns as a large part of the sauropod's diet. Amphicelius may have even often used the shades of gallery forests to stay cool during the day and do most of their feeding in the open savanna at night. Of course, some trees are rare and need more rainwater than what's been provided in the environment. Usually, all sauropods would have a high metabolism, so even though Amphicelius eats low quality ferns and food sources, it still needs to eat a lot of food to live every day and night, like us human beings. We'll talk about ourselves into the near future, though. I just want to point out that we humans are meant to be carnivores and only eat meat. Speaking of meat eaters, it's time to talk about our next dinosaur for this episode, the Sauropagonax. The name of the dinosaur Sauropagonax means Lord of Lizard Eaters because it was known to be one of the largest predators of the Jurassic period, standing up to 43 feet long, 22 feet tall, and weighing in on 9,900 pounds. Sauropagonax was about the same size as T-Rex and Allosaurus. In fact, as I might have mentioned before in episode 17, Sauropagonax could be one of the seven species of Allosaurus specimen, or a junior synonym to it known as A. Maximus. Of course, it's probably bigger than Allosaurus actually, and its size became more close to T-Rex. The discovery of Sauropagonax was made in Oklahoma of the USA during the Great Depression of the 1930s. 
but it was never really studied. Between 1931 and 1932, John Willis Stovall uncovered the remains of this large theropod, and it was once named Saurophagus Maximus. Saurophagus was a term that meant lizard eater, and Maximus means the largest in Latin. But the name Saurophagus was already preoccupied in 1831, and had already been given by William Swainson. In 1995, Daniel Kerr classified the specimen from Saurophagus to Saurophaganax, because the fossils may have shown a resemblance to its smaller cousin, the Allosaurus. These fossils contain disarticulated bones of at least four individuals. Of course, the identification of Saurophaganax is a matter of dispute. So either it's accepted as it was back in the year 2004 as its own species, or possibly an Allosaurus species due to some material from New Mexico. During the time of living in the late Jurassic period, Saurophaganax was known to hunt some herbivorous prey such as Camptosaurids and Stegosaurid dinosaurs, but it also may have favored in hunting sauropods such as Amphicelius, and usually it would have to take two or more packs of Saurophaganax groups to take down that big sauropod. Then again, Saurophaganax may have been as solitary as a leopard, and as daring as a hyena or a lion. It either fought off the adult sauropod or went for the younger ones for an easier meal. Don't want to take a risk being stepped on by an adult Amphicelius. Well guys, that's all the facts for Amphicelius and Saurophaganax for this episode. If you liked this episode, please leave a like in the comment section and subscribe to this channel. Next time on Ian Fairley's Dinosaur Series, we are going to be talking about life beyond the Mesozoic Era and talk about some creatures and life in the Cenozoic Era, 65 million years ago after the extinction of the dinosaurs and the beginning rise of the first mammals, including mankind as well. Or if you have any other dinosaur requests for me to talk about, let me know in the comments as soon as you can. This is Ian Fairley, and thank you for listening.